This is Razvan Gavrilas from Cognitive SEO, and today we are having as a guest for the Cognitive SEO Talks show, uh, Mr. Lukas Zelezny. Uh, I will do a short intro about uh, Lukas, and uh, then I'll let him uh, do the talking. That's the idea. So, uh, Lukas is a keynote speaker, SEO consultant, and the author. He started working in the SEO industry around 20 years ago when he was living in Poland. Every year he is actively participating in 10 to 20 events as a keynote speaker and he has worked for mid and large companies such as Homeway, uh, Homeaway, Thomson Reuters, Thomson Reuters and the Digital uh, Property Group. I'll uh, Hello. Let me say a few, a few words to our viewers. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be here with you. And uh, thank you very much for uh, such a nice introduction. I don't know if there is anything else I could add. Maybe only that last six and a half year I was in uh, U-Switch uh, slash Zupla. This is right now the one company. Whoever is uh, living in UK probably recognize Zupla or U-Switch. And uh, end of last year, I decided to move on my own totally. So, as uh, some of you may see in the background, there is a big ventilator because I'm in India at the moment, where I'm more, where I'm still connecting and, and traveling a little, as some people call this uh, remoters or, or, or digital nomads. So, yeah, that's that's the new chapter for me. Okay, nice, nice to hear. Um... So, uh, without uh, I've read something uh, recently that you posted. Um, it says that without any doubt, so 100% growth year over year on, on organic traffic is something that your website and business deserves to achieve. Uh, I would like to ask you: Is this really possible every year? And if yes, can you share a bit of knowledge uh, on this? So you see, that was a very short message, uh, and thank you very much for mentioning this. At least I know that people are, uh, are reading this, um, and uh, the short answer is no. It's not possible to grow forever 100%. And I will give you an example. Um, there are some established websites, like Price, price Comparison websites, uh, which have been for many years in the UK market, and only in the UK market, because it's a very, very strong culturally related business. You cannot replicate um, this um, price comparison website to any other country. And, you know, UK uh, is not made out of rubber. It will not be like balloon uh, growing. It, it, there is a certain number of people, certain demand and so on and so on. But my post about 100% growth um, was mainly dedicated to websites and business owners and the companies which have a website and often for many years they perform quite well but they don't know about some what I call blockers. Some little blockers here and there in the organic strategy that can be identified by someone who is um, um, in SEO industry and, and, and is, uh, you know, SEO consultant or SEO agency, that doesn't matter. But uh, these people can identify these blockers and that can be various things like, you know, page speed is one of the blocker or it can be, you know, um, let's say, uh, um, the, the fact that there is a setup which is using subdomains, which I'm uh, uh, personally not a big fan of, so keeping blog on the subdomain and forum on the subdomain, and so on and so on and so on. So SEO people can identify these things, suggest a solution, implement or help to implement that solution, and then out of nowhere, boof, 100%. And I would say like 100% is nothing because I know businesses which are on the market for many years and we had a conversation and then when we unblock this and i'm speaking we because there is lots of my colleagues which are on the market which are probably doing the same then out of nowhere the business started performing on three four five hundred percent growth year over year on 
organic traffic as well as on uh, inquiries or conversions whatever uh, you want however you want to call them and whatever type of the business is okay uh, so uh, from my understanding you worked as a head of organic acquisition for for different uh, companies uh, for so, lo so long now um, you've worked with different uh, uh, in different areas like uh, and this is a question in the e-commerce in the software as a service maybe business in the consulting uh, uh, this is lead generation uh, area. Which one of these um, areas do you find to be more challenging from an SEO perspective? Or they are all I, the same? Yeah, I think, you know, um, it's, um, it depends on the niche. If you would uh, go with any insurance based business, uh, credit cards, banking, anything like that very old industry established for many many years and then there is this new fintech player here and there despite from the fact that they are fintech it's still very difficult to make them take over a big players like big banks with forever online and even longer offline and so on and so on from the other side i like to look on the positive sides and positive aspects i for many years, I've never been that excited to work with e-commerce websites. But in last few years, I'm more more than more than excited to see, uh, you know, e-commerce website uh, through analytics, through Search Console, and you know, like there is plenty of tools uh, that um, can be a big game changer. One of the tools I'm always the day one I'm recommending to install to any. Uh, e-commerce website owner or person who is responsible for digital marketing is a keyword hero keyword hero which is trying to marry data from search console and marry data um, with data uh, from google analytics and that click together and then the user can see uh, traffic um, organic traffic through keywords organic keywords that was not possible for many years because of not provided and so on and so on and only ppc people were able to go that deep and we've been uh, we seo been quite um, in the like kids in the fog we knew url that performs the best we had some information from search console but uh, search console is very limited in terms of behavioral aspects like bounce rate like time on page and so on and so on and so on then we've been juggling the stretches doing some kind of uh, sometimes more or less smart uh, VLOOKUPs. Right now we have this keyword hero software, which I personally use a lot just to understand like, listen, these products are the best. These pages are performing the best and we need to leverage here, here and here because these keywords are performing the best and these keywords are not. And so on and so on and so on. So I can bring the owner of the e-commerce platform a very, very uh, straightforward answers from which we are processing to step two, three, four, and five, and so on. Okay, okay. I wanted to ask you, do you also do uh, uh, content gap analysis on uh, identifying uh, uh, opportunities in uh, currently existing traffic or may maybe in uh, the keywords that you're not ranking for at the moment, and how do you do it? Yeah, so there is plenty of tools right now. Um, Back in the day, I remember when we've been in home away, I had this concept that we could do something, I didn't even call this gap analysis, but uh, later I just created this, this term. And I wanted to understand where my website I was responsible for is not ranking and my competitors are ranking, but just to make this data more accurate, I was taking two or three competitors and they had to rank simultaneously let's say between position 1 and 20 um, on specific uh, on, on the keywords and my website when I was which I was responsible for was not ranking now to do this we had like a tremendous um, problems because we wanted to go really deep and those days we were using search metrics that was 2010 or 2011 we were doing exports and we were trying to do this uh, VLOOKUPs uh, on, on local machines 
which was sometimes killing the local machine. And I was just going for a coffee, uh, croissant, then I was coming yeah. back, and then the VLOOKUP was still processing it and so on. And then we brought a software with my French colleague, uh, Nicolas, which we called LUNIC, Lukas Nicolas. And that LUNIC was processing this. We only had to, to put this exports in the specific format to the LUNIC and then run away because you never know how it will end up. And then LUNIC was able to um, tell us uh, gap analysis. Today is much easier because you have a CMRush, for example, yeah? Or you can, um, you can use um, plenty of other tools uh, which have a built-in gap analysis. But my um, main point of gap analysis is, first, if you're joining the company or if you're joining uh, uh, as an agency to serve a company as here, ask these people, who is your competitor, guys? Don't go through data because going always through data may be a little kind of, you know, not the right way. They can say like, yeah, they are, but they are not the main one. The main one are these guys and that guys and so on and so on. So when you know your competitors, then go either through VLOOKUP or either through like a CMRush and try to understand, show me keywords that my website, I'm responsible to deliver a growth in organic traffic is not ranking at all. And at the same time, these three guys who are my competitors are ranking together, ideally between position one and 20. And you will get lots of keywords that potentially relevant to your business. I have a business uh, I'm working with is a jeweler, a very prominent jeweler in UK. Um, and uh, obviously when we done and gap analysis, we've been able to identify that, for example, there is a no spins as a product. It's an uh, Indian uh, jewelry type, uh, uh, no, no spins and no stats with diamond. That's the product that we could potentially bring in the website. And we will not only fulfill a bunch of keywords, but we also uh, give customers a like huge opportunity to purchase another variety of products. <laughs> okay. Um, do you all, would you be willing to share uh, a technique that you're using that's not uh, used by uh, in the mainstream, but uh, by most of the guys and you have success with, uh, with it? Um, so I'm doing snapshot, something what I call snapshot. And it's a little complicated, but thankfully I, one afternoon last year, I had enough time. So I recorded video. And this video is in my, on my website zelazny.uk. There is a section which I called "Don't, don't, 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 please don't kill me." University. I shouldn't call this university. Maybe like you know, guides or something. And there is a video which is telling step by step what, what is snapshot. But generally, you know, in a couple of minutes ago, I told you about gap. And gap is to find opportunities for new content. Snapshot is to utilize the existing content. So snapshot is generally that you should identify two, three, four keywords per URL that already deliver traffic and think, what can I do to make this keyword perform better, rank higher, deliver better quality of traffic? How can I modify this page, pages, that are triggered by these keywords which are ranking on position four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make them on position one, or maybe two, or maybe three. And now this is where, where the, 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 the most important part of this is. If you are able to do this on scale, on scale, so if you are able to optimize uh, 10 pages and 30 keywords a day, or 50 pages and 100 keywords a day, and if you can repeat that, over and over and over for next 20 days no questions no questions that the growth will come and the growth can really 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 surprise um very really surprise the owner of the business i have another client in netherlands uh which is a little difficult for me because my dutch is very basic frankly speaking doesn't exist i i don't i don't even understand the word in dutch but i am able to help this customer because First of all, custom, this customer uh, is one of my favorite uh, customers with a great sense of humor and always open for suggestions. 
And when I told him about Snapshot, he was like, Lucas, I have an idea. I will um, um, ask some of the students who know topic and who can help us and who can write and so on and so on. So we have a bunch of students who more or less understand topic and they are able to deliver, let's say, page or two or three a week, but, but my multiple is by number of students, by number of days. The overall scale is massive. And it's straight away, like you will see that your chart of visibility chart of some such metrics is growing. Number of keywords that ranking are growing because you're also attracting the long tail and so on and so on and so on. So uh, there is plenty of metrics that pretty much in a couple of weeks will start going up. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite techniques also. Uh, I, I didn't call it snapshot. I also included it in the content gap uh, analysis part, um, but by analyzing the current uh, current traffic that you, you have. So yeah, uh, it's my opinion also that you get a lot of uh, growth that uh, can be optimized just by uh, reworking your 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 existing content and your existing uh, your existing pages uh, for example finding, for... Finding the ha hidden, hidden gems finding hidden gems like oh my gosh i didn't even know that it performs so well let's make this perform better you know yeah 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 um yeah. how would you for example uh, what kind of strategy would you use for a software as a services company to make them uh, uh, acquire their first hundred uh, users. Let's say there is a software as a services company that just uh, launched and uh, um, what kind of strategy would you use from an SEO perspective, digital marketing perspective to, to uh, help them get their first uh, hundred users? Okay, so I think there are two aspects. The first is SEO, and SEO can be um, only part of the strategy. And there is something much bigger, which is like uh, marketing strategy or digital strategy, whatever you want to call this. And I will give a couple of advices because I was working with uh, uh, software as a service, uh, plenty of plenty of uh, the tools, um, and I could see how they grow. So I think, you know. There is no doubt that uh, all this kind of buzz around the brand is important. All forms of free webinars, free videos, free courses, and so on and so on and so on, uh, is a is a is a great uh, is a great uh, way to tell more and more people that there is something like that um, uh, on the market. Second thing, which is absolutely brilliant, I saw this once on that properly is a gamification so uh, i don't know if this is still there but some time ago hotjar which is a software for this who don't know which records video of your user how they navigate through your website so every every operation like every click wherever they move mouse cursor everything will be recorded as a video a bit creepy but very useful um, so uh, they don't add gamification. You could get even a lifetime access for free if you was able to invite enough users in a certain time. And you know, it was working kind of like, uh, maybe a little like MLM, um, you know, MLM, uh, multi-level marketing, yeah, yeah. like a pyramid. Um, and that was working very well. Some guys were really into that. And I think that was quite similar to what Dropbox done initially. Like anytime you, someone will use your referral, you're getting a lifetime uh, extra space for free. Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that we need to remember that, uh, you know, there is a, for, um, as a service that is giving a solution for a problem, but this problem can be sometimes a very specific problem like brand tracking, for example. So it's good not to close tightly around the problem, but start writing around and around and around and around and giving a very good content. HubSpot is very good in this. HubSpot is writing about lots of different aspects of online marketing, very good articles some research and so on and so on. Not only about like, hey, this is my product, 
and this is what we're doing and you need to convert and you need to buy it you need to buy this because if you don't buy this then it's end of the world no you know they are trying to be industry leader and so on and so on and then finally it's like um like an, uh, a simple seo strategy if you have plenty of this content you can start doing this snapshot or gap we were talking before but i think going into seo as the only way maybe this will not be enough okay. and one more thing i really uh, believe maybe because i am one of them a members who are like customer advisory board or a platform ambassadors guys who can do additional buzz Uh, around the uh, internet guys who can show a couple of slides about the software um, that we, is, is, is just entering the market guys who are early adopters guys who are recognized <clears throat> in the industry I think uh, there is a couple of people who who are are quite uh, quite recognized and whenever they will get a tool to test then they are like oh my god this is cool i will give a shout on twitter i will give a shout on linkedin let's catch up every quarter maybe i can give you some uh some feedback some advices what else you could implement in this software and this is how the the the, the platform is growing okay uh, let's move this on the social uh, aspect a, a bit now so Uh, as a social media expert, how do you think that the social signals influence the rankings in uh, in Google? Do you think there is any any correlation at all, or it's just no correlation at all? I I don't like to um, answer um, pretty scientific question. You ask feelings, yeah, so on opinion, but. Unfortunately, I don't have any hard data in front of myself, so I will go with feelings. Uh, in my opinion, there is no correlation between shares and rankings. And I believe that there is no correlation because of two reasons. First, I don't feel like Google would like to start including uh, signals uh, from third-party platform as they are part of algorithm. You never know how long Facebook will be on the market. You know the history of plenty of uh, social media or websites like Bibu, Orkut, and I could say probably 10 more that doesn't exist anymore. And the second thing is that, let's be honest, it's even easier to gain these factors than things and trying to pretend that Sometimes, sometimes some people are uh, buying backlinks and trying to make them look natural and so on and so on. Buying shares these days is the simplest thing ever. Buying retweets, buying likes, buying everything is like right now a virtual currency. Yeah. So you know, if if Google would take this into the um, uh, into the on, on the board as a factor, then there is also the problem with private posts and public posts on Facebook, for example, uh, private uh, and uh, public uh, profiles on Twitter and uh, Instagram. In my opinion, there isn't. Obviously, you know, it's good to make sure that your content will have this virality aspect, uh, will have this kind of nice, sweet snap about, oh, people want to share it, people want to add on Twitter, and so on and so on and so on. It's great, but I wouldn't say that, especially adding this, um, like many people add this onto Twitter or Facebook. That yeah, I think about uh, Twitter. Twitter has uh, uh, um, practically deleted from their system the number of shares, so you can't know how many times uh, the URL has been has been shared already. So that's the same may happen to Facebook. I think LinkedIn also did that. So you can't see the numbers. So practically a third party platform like Google won't be able to see directly this, this information. Plus there would be a huge amount of queries that they would have to do for all the URLs that exist on the, on the web. Uh, but what about they can't extract it? What about the traffic? Do you think the traffic has an influence on the ranking? So if because Google has access to all this 
data. Google Analytics, the Chrome browser, uh, they can view and identify a trend when, when something uh, uh, starts to get, get traction. Also the queries in the, in the Google, Google uh, search engine for, might indicate a specific trend. What's your feeling about uh, uh, the traffic uh, influence on the, on the ranking? So th this story is a little different. I think uh, direct uh, traffic can influence your um, can help you rank a little better in organic. Uh, again, with uh, social media, I would be very careful because again, uh, you can pump pre pretty much tons of irrelevant traffic uh, through Facebook, buying some cheap adverts in uh, countries that are not very competitive, like for example Laos or Tunisia where click will cost you like three, four, maybe 10 P and pump artificially this traffic. Uh, difficult for me to answer this question because again, like I haven't read any uh, research um, and 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 um, haven't had time to do anything uh, like that by myself. Uh, I could agree that direct traffic can influence uh, direct traffic. So if someone liked domain name and uh, enter your website and that can to some point influence your um, organic visibility but definitely you know the way how people are acting in SERPs so exactly in Google what they're typing how often and uh, how often then they, they go into your website that's definitely a signal and there was a plenty of uh, studies that been been showing correlation so again like you know, as a fan of social media, especially LinkedIn you mentioned, yeah? Uh, LinkedIn for me is like a, like a holy crap, a unicorn of social media. If tomorrow Facebook would turn off the service and be like, yeah, whatever. Uh, it's a bit shame that all these photos of my dinner and cats disappeared, but hey, you know, I have LinkedIn. And uh, I have leads through LinkedIn, people approaching me through LinkedIn, people chatting to me through LinkedIn. It's better than email in many cases because there is no spam. Um, and, and yeah, but I would be very careful to, to say like link, uh, link, traffic from LinkedIn will be influencing organic. Okay, okay. What's your, uh, what's your opinion on the on-page and off-page uh, factors? How do you see them in 2019? I don't know, compared to the past to the past years, is it something changing? Uh, is it the same? This is a very good question. So um, I can see that off page and predominantly, if we're talking about backlinks, is still important, but somehow it's maybe not as critical as it was. 10 years ago yeah so it's not like uh, um we need to, people are talking less about we need to have 10 links per that keyword on that url per that anchor text and that url people are thinking more about on page and i think on page is tremendously important right now especially page speed that i mentioned a couple of times today but uh, because we have all these tools like scmrush deep crawl or even content king um, we can uh, very, very deeply um, optimize uh, existing pages. I call this sculpture. You can even sculpture this little link, this little problem here and there, here and there, and make this website like super, super, super SEO friendly from on page perspective. That Google will have no problem to crawl, Google will see um, properly optimized images title tags that are not too long too short meta descriptions that are not duplicated one h1 tag not five and then h2 h3 tags and so on and so on. i personally i am a fan of on page optimization i love this it's better than lego for me you know i love playing with this and I have, you, have you played with uh, with have you played with the cognitive seo on page uh, on page tool yet yes i was uh, but you know what it's probably too early to to give yeah. some you uh, just launched it in, in december yeah so. yeah but i will definitely be happy to to share my findings uh overall yeah, i'm a big fan of one page optimization and um you know 
every time you're doing recrawl and you're waiting for an update uh, when the crawler is finishing and you see this progress is a nice feeling you're taking a sip of coffee and you're saying like when you're doing much, okay 92 percent still three pages have too low text uh, to html ratio or you know uh, not enough text what we can do can we know index them they are quite important and you're starting to think what can be done and so on and so on this is really cool mm -hmm. okay since i know and, you know, you're relying only on yourself you're relying only on your patient you're relying only on your time and on your ideas it's quite creative sometimes rather than you know chasing people across internet and you know uh, trying to do link building off page and so on and so on however you know if you really want i can give you one um way how i'm doing uh link building uh, maybe people will find this important because we're talking about on page and we didn't say anything about off page okay okay, you okay with this yeah so so my i always say like you know brand tracking tracking your brand man seo that's a very good brand you know when whenever you will find online cognitive seo you know that this is about cognitive seo uh potentially lukas Zelezny is also this kind of unique combination of polish name check signing whenever i will find through brand tracking software and there is plenty of i know that this is potentially or 99.9 percent .9 about me uh so there is brand 24 brand watch uh, talk walker brand Man, which is also owned by us yeah exactly exactly uh, which i'm also a user by the way um so uh whenever you see that there is a mention from the blog or from the news website or from any other website which is not like a twitter or facebook social media which uh, we know that links are are no follow or going through sandwich page you can always try to approach person who who mentioned you and say like oh thank you very much for mentioning me by the way and is there any chance that uh, you could uh, make the, this 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 uh, link to me or something like that and uh, very often people people willing to do this obviously i need to mention that you cannot offer anything saying like if you do this then we will put you to our newsletter because that will be against google terms and uh, service terms of service and you may end up in penalty but uh, i feel it's absolutely ethical to say to post something on twitter and then post factum approach the owner and say like you know what thank you very much for mentioning me we already tweeted link to your blog on our uh, twitter and by the way there is a chance to make uh, this uh, brand, man, brand, brand name a link to our website, we will be even more happy. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing. And the other thing is that very often there is a situation that your brand name may be, especially for personal brands like mine, uh, the link is going to Twitter or LinkedIn rather than um, a website. Rather than, yeah, rather than to your website. And it's very easy to approach and say like you know what maybe we can do this or that maybe you can change this link and make this link pointing to my website rather to linkedin because even, yeah. i think the link we have enough even if you don't get the link even even if you don't get a link you create a connection with uh, with the person that mentioned you because you're top of mind for for them so it's like when you uh, so, for example, when we, we are using brand mentions for uh, for tracking uh, the mentions for cognitive SEO and for brand mentions, that we outreach in the first hour when someone publishes uh, something, you practically get uh, almost 100% a reply from uh, from them because they just posted something about you and you contacted uh, contacted them. So. Uh, yeah, it's a very. Uh, it's also my opinion. That it's a very good technique to get uh, to get uh, more uh, engagement and uh, also maybe create links uh, where uh, they don't exist. Uh, yeah. So since we were talking about tools, how do you use or have used Cognitive SEO in the in the past uh, for the agencies that you've been or? On your personal uh, use cases, if you can share something with our users. Um, so I was using uh, in the past uh, when I was in home away, I think, uh, cognitive SEO, and I was using on early days new switch. 
Uh, I found that Cognitive SEO is uh, able to prepare a very sophisticated analysis of wherever your competitors are and you are. And I was using this predominantly on the beginning. I was doing some kind of gap analysis on backlinks. So I was uh, trying to understand where my competitors are getting backlinks from and I am not. So it's very similar to keyword gap analysis, except of in keyword gap analysis, you're going what keywords are not ranking and they are, and in backlinks you are going what backlinks they have from which website and I'm not. And that was really, really useful because, um, because uh, yeah, I, I wasn't be able to do this in Excel. I wouldn't be able to do this on local machine. Potentially, I would need to have a server and then start juggling with, with uh, you know, VLOOKUPs. So Cognitive SEO was uh, one of the most powerful those days. And I know that it was very, very shortly as you've been awarded by, by, by some, or someone mentioned that, you know, with a tool that is doing the most sophisticated things. It was many years ago, but, uh, but I, I could agree only with that, that it was and it still is a very sophisticated approach to, to backlinks. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, how do you think uh, the SEO landscape will change in the next 10 years as a last question? Oh my gosh, if you would ask me, I'm always thinking this is the George, uh, not George Carlin, uh, Carlos Sagan approach to problems. If you are trying to go forward, take a step back, I'm trying to understand if you would ask me this question in 2007 or 2008, what I would answer and how much I would be right or wrong. But I think if, okay, it's very dynamic, but then from the other side, does the SEO change that much from 2009 till 2019? Obviously we have lots of platforms. We have much more skilled people. Um, Google didn't, didn't lose the leadership. But overall, like, you know, I would say 80% become uh, more or less the same in terms of the concept. So my answer for your question would be that 2029, well, I will be, oh my gosh, you don't want to know how old I will be. But yeah, my daughter will be 10. Uh, so let's go this way. I think uh, there will be still, um, you know, concept of SERPs, search engine results pages, as we know. I think there can be some legal implication about Google uh, reutilizing content from publishers, even as AMPs, uh, or you know, on the on the on the uh, snippets, uh, on the on the rich snippets, on the featured snippets, whatever they they are using. Um, you know, right now it's in some queries very difficult to go inside uh, to the website. Google is trying to serve everything inside Google. And uh, that can be problematic in the future. And uh, voice search, I don't feel again, like I shouldn't say this because I sound like, like, you know, like guys who like uh, horses and so a car and said like, oh, only horse transportation cars are too noisy. I have the same approach to voice search. I'm like typing, tapping, yes, voice search, definitely no. So I don't feel like voice search will dramatically change the environment. I remember 2010 when I was sitting in a kitchen of home away and I was talking to my colleague and he was saying, I mean, those days manager right now, my, my, my good colleague, he was saying like, look, a smart job may be in risk because of the voice search. That was 2010. Ten years later, nothing happened. You know, I'm still in this. You still in this, and plenty of our colleagues we have in common are still in this business. Uh, we know more, so I don't feel like there will be dramatic change. I would say there will be there, there will be some changes, but the core of the uh, of the of the concept will stay the same. Okay, okay. And now for a final question, which is out of the con context of SEO. If you would have one hundred thousand dollars to invest in a business, what business type or what business would you invest in, or, uh, or and start? Oh my gosh! If I would have hundred thousand dollars, what kind of business I would invest? 
It's a difficult question, you know. No one ever, you're never thinking like, um, you know what? I am a big fan of a website like Quora. I wouldn't say I would uh, create another Quora because that would be completely stupid. But creating a niche version of Quora, uh, something for a very specific, uh, narrow, um, but still big enough uh, re- list of recipients, um, you know, uh, kind of Quora for doctors or Quora for, you know, the, the industry that would need this. Again, like I wouldn't be able to answer, but the core of this concept is that Quora is that generated by uh, users. So I would initially use that money to build a platform uh, to do a basic marketing but then obviously i would uh, i would have this 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 kind of trust that on some point user will start taking over that platform and in that industry that will be um that will be very very prominent website beekeeping you know for beekeepers i think beekeepers are very abandoned in online environment and i always saying that when i will be tired of a ceo i will become a beekeeper because i like bees and i like honey so maybe a website for for beekeepers which will be kind of like a quora and you know that would go worldwide and people who are in the honey industry could start exchanging information you know i think this is a great great concept okay okay thank you for sharing all this information with uh, with us it was a pleasure to have you on the cognitive seo talks show uh and see you next time thank you everyone for absolutely watching. thank you Yeah, thank you very, very much for having me and lots of warm greetings uh, to everyone who was listening us from very warm India where I'm at the moment. And yeah, um, use Cognitive, discover your own strategies, tactics and be the happiest SEO in the industry. Okay, thank you.